Hi guys, in this video I'm going to talk about the old Winters forecasting formulas, which are a way to do exponential smoothing, but also incorporate trend and or seasonality. So just a moment of history, there was a gang of four, Holt, Modigliani, Muth, and Simon, and they were in some university in the 1950s, and they had a project where they had to forecast production and inventory of companies and factories of the such. And so just so you know, who these guys are, two of them won the Nobel Prize in economics, and one of them is the father of rational expectations, which is a big theory in economy, apparently. But we are going to look at Holt, who was also an economist, but he had background in engineering and computing, and he is the one who came up with these forecasting formulas. So in his own words, he says that simple exponential smoothing, what I showed in a previous video, were widely used as simply computed formulas for smoothing data. But one weekend in the April of 1957, it dawned on Holt that SCS concept might be used not only as a way to smooth the level of a variable, but also might be used to smooth trends, seasonals, and other components. So he wrote a paper, but it was never published until the early 2000s. And this group, they also took a graduate student named Winters or Winters, and he programmed the formulas in Fortran and basically tested how well they did on some on some real data. And he found that the formula forecasts were surprisingly accurate. And so he published his result in 1960, and the formulas came to be called Holt Winters forecasting formulas. Now that there is some confusion, some people consider the Holt formula to only be about the trend and the Holt Winters to also incorporate the seasonals. But according to Holt's own description, he invented the entire formulas and Winters just aided him in programming. I wasn't there, so I don't know if he's right or not, but in any case, I thought it was interesting. So let's do a quick reminder. In the last video, I've showed simple exponential smoothing, which is basically a way to do exponentially decaying weighted average of past observation, right? What I wrote here. And it can also be expressed in this kind of formula where you have the observation and you also have some state or a level and the observation depends on the state and the state depends on previous states. Now, the problem with this is that this simple form doesn't include trend or seasonality. So let's try to account for them now. So with trend, the underlying model will be the following. So the observation will be equal to the level, the state, plus some trend adjustment, plus some noise. The level or the state will be equal to the previous level, plus some trend adjustment plus some coefficient times the same noise. And the trend adjustment will be equal to the previous trend adjustment plus again, some coefficient times that noise. And this is one way of presenting it, but the way it's usually is presented is that you transform these formula. You take the first one and derive the innovation or the error terms, then plug it in into the second one and get this which means that the state or the level is an exponentially decaying weighted average of the current observation and the previous state plus trend or the adjusted level. And you can also invert this equation right now to extract the epsilon, uh, get this, plug it in the last equation and get this thing over here. And this means that the trend adjustments are an exponentially decaying weighted average of the previous trend and of the difference in states. And note that the alpha and these betas hat have to be between zero and one. So here the forecast will have a constant trend. They will have a trend unlike the simple exponential smoothing, but it will be constant. And one way to see this is simply taking these equations over here and zeroing out the epsilon. We get these equations over here. And so the trend adjustment, it's, any step forward will just be equal to the previous trend adjustment. Yeah, so for one step ahead, we have this. For two steps ahead, we have this. Once we plug in LT plus one, we have this. Uh, so yeah, this is instead of this. And then BT plus one is equal to BT, so we get this. And that's how we get LT plus two times BT. And if we continue this until an horizon of H, we get that uh, it's equal to the last known level plus h times the last known trend adjustment. And another way of doing this is using the other equations where you can manipulate them and get the same thing. 
And note that this model has four parameters. It has the initial uh, level, the initial trend adjustment, the alpha and the beta parameters, yeah, or the beta star parameters. And all of them have to be found using some optimization, for example, least squares. So let me switch into R. And uh, I will use the forecast library. And now let's uh, code this. So these are the parameters uh, that I'm coding. Know that I'm using beta star, and then beta is just beta stars times alpha. And I'm creating data from this model. Okay, so I'm just creating the uh, data from this model. I'm using the first set of equations, which are easier for me to program. Yeah, so uh, I'm going backward. I'm first computing the trend adjustment, which is equal to this equation. It's equal to this. Okay, then I'm computing the level, which is equal to this. And then I'm computing the observation, which is just equal to this. So then I plot it. Looks like this. And I can also plot uh, both the y, the level, and the trend. We see that the y and the level are almost the same. The trend adjustments are a bit different. So basically, the level should be very, very close to the initial L0 plus the cumulative sum of the b's. So b's are the trend adjustment. And each step, you add the b. So we can see they are very, very close. And actually, uh, if I'm not mistaken, then this equation over here is a theoretically expected level given b's. Yeah, so I even wrote it here. Yeah, so I wrote it here. You can verify this by simply plugging the expectation on the L here, and these terms will cancel out. But And moving forward, the LTs, the, these expressions will always add a B, and so you will end up with the sum over the Bs. So we can now fit the model, and notice that here we have to say additive noise and additive trend. And we also need to specify that we don't want damping. I will talk about this in a second. And so this is the fit. We see that it found that the alpha is 0 0.57, very close to 0 0.6. The beta is 0 0.39, very close to the 0 0.42 that it actually is. The L is 50.0 something, very close to 50. And B is 0 0.82, very close to 1. And sigma is 1, exactly what we uh, set it out to be. So we see overall it had a good fit. And we can also uh, plot the real level and what the model predicts is the real level. And we see it's almost identical. The same for the trend adjustment, we can plot the real trend adjustment or what the model predicts or infers to be the uh, trend adjustment. And we see again, they are almost perfectly aligned. And so not surprisingly, the fitted values will be also almost identical because the fitted value is simply the level plus the trend adjustment. And note that the fit object, we didn't give it L or B, we just gave it Y. So it knew how to get a decent L and a decent B out of that Y by itself, just because we specified the model. And one reason that it's happening is that the data we generated actually comes from this model. Okay, and we can also forecast and then uh, plug it into an auto plot, and we see that indeed the forecast has a constant trend, more or less. And we also get prediction intervals of 80% and 95%. Okay, so one of the problems with this trend is that it's a constant trend. And this is okay for short-term forecasting, but for long-term forecasting, we usually, we usually don't believe that this is the case. So what we can do is add a shrinking or a dampening parameter, a phi, from zero to one, and now we simply replace all the b's by phi times the b's in the equation. We get these equations over here, and now the forecasts are damped. So if we now develop the forecasting, yeah, so this is yt plus one, yt plus two will be equal to lt plus one plus phi bt plus one. Um, this expands into this, this expands into this, and we get this, and if we continue overall, until if, uh, an horizon h, we get to this thing. And if we continue, uh, if we take h to infinity, this actually converges into this expression over here, which we can see is a constant. So if we use the damped version, then the observation eventually become constant. They don't go with a constant trend. They themselves become constant. Note that if we plug phi equal to 1, we are back to the regular trend. Uh, but usually we set the fee between 0 0.8 to 0 0.98. 
lower than 0.8 will result in very quick damping. So uh, basically immediately going into a constant observations and above 98, it won't be so distinguishable from regular trend, at least for a uh, reasonable time forecasting. Let's see this in code. So the only thing I've added here is that phi is equal to 0 0.9. Here, this, the code is the same. I'm just replacing every B with phi times B. Okay, and if we plot this, it looks like this. If we fit this now, we have to specify that we want a damped version, okay? And now we can see that, again, the alpha is very close to 0 0.6, that the beta is very close to 0 0.42, phi is very close to 0 0.9, it's close to 50, close to one, and this is also close to one. So overall, not a bad fit. Let's see how the forecasting will look. We see here that the trend originally is going down, but because of the dampening, because of the shrinking, it slows down, slows down, and then eventually the observation become constant. Okay, so this was the trend. There's also a way to incorporate seasonality. The underlying model looks like this. We have an observation. The observation is equal to uh, the last state plus the last known seasonal part plus noise. The state is equal is exactly the same, but what is added is also a seasonal part and the seasonal part is just equal to the last seasonal part plus some uh, noise times a gamma. And these equation can also be transformed into the forecasting equation. This, this stays the same. We just ignore the epsilon. LT becomes an exponentially weighted average of the deseasonal value and the last level. Okay. And the seasonal is an exponentially weighted average of the detrended value and the last seasonal. So if previously we had this either a constant trend or a damped trend here, there won't be a trend, but there will be seasonality. So it will more or less repeat uh, at intervals of M if M is your uh, seasonal component. And again, we can, in the forecast, if we are forecasting too far ahead, then taking M back won't give us, won't take us back to the actual known seasonal parts. So we have to sometimes go back and back and back until we get to the last known seasonal parts or inferred seasonal part because in reality, they are never known. We are, just, we are just inferring them from the model. So this is a math way of writing it. And the number of parameters in this model is M plus three. So the M parameters of the seasonality, we have to specify what were the initial uh, seasonality parameters. Um, the initial level, the alpha parameter that, that tunes the weighted average between this component and this component, and the gamma, which tunes the weighted average between this component and this component. Let's see this in code. So here there's no more B and no more beta, uh, but there is a gamma and there is the seasonality. And so here I chose the seasonality of uh, frequency of four. And now I'm just coding the equations just as before. And if I plot this, it looks something like this. And in order to fit that, I have to say an additive noise, no trend and an additive seasonality and I don't want a dampening parameter here. And these are the fitted values. Alpha is very close to 0 0.6. Gamma is very close to 0 0.3. L is very close to 50. And S, and here you have to read it uh, backward. This is very close to 10. This is very close to zero. This is very close to minus 10. And this is very close to zero. And again, this is very close to the sigma of one. Yeah. Okay, and we can also forecast and it would look like this. We can also incorporate both trend and seasonality. So it's basically, we just add the two equations from before and y is equal and y is equal to the level plus the trend adjustment plus the seasonal. Uh, the forecasting formulation will be like this. And moving from this formulation to this formulation is exactly as before. You take the noise and you plug it in the equations. Um, the level is the weighted average of the de-seasonal uh, series and the previous level plus trend adjustment. The trend adjustment is just as before, and the seasonal is the weighted average of the detrended series and the previous seasonal. Okay, so now forecasts will have both a constant trend and seasonality. There will be M plus five parameters, M parameters for the seasonality, L0, B0, alpha, beta, and gamma. 
let's see this. So now we set up all the hyperparameters from before. We generate the data. We plot it. It looks like this. OK? And I also plotted the level now, so you can see it. OK? And we can plot also all the different components. So this, these are the actual observations. Yeah, this is the level. Uh, this is the trend adjustment, the Bs. And these are the Ss, the seasonal parts. We can see that the seasonal parts doesn't stay exactly the same. Sometimes it's bigger. Sometimes it shrinks. Sometimes it shrinks more. So it uh, has some adjustment to the seasonal parts. And let's see how to fit it. Here we need an additive model with an additive trend and an additive seasonality, OK? And once we fit it, we see alpha close to 0 0.6, beta close to 0 0.42, gamma close to 0 0.3, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, OK, L is close to 50, L is close to 50, B is close to 1, S is close to 10, 0, minus 10, and 0, and sigma is close to 1. And again, we can forecast, and it would look something like this. Final thing is that all these models until now were additive. So they add an additive error, an additive trend, and an additive seasonal parts. For example, in the additive trend, we see that we see that the trend adjustments were added to the level. The additive seasonality, we see that the seasonality were added to uh, everything else in the y equation. And the additive errors, we see that the errors were always additive. But there can also be multiplicative models. For example, multiplicative trend would have this model over here, which you see uh, the y is equal to the level times a trend adjustment. And um, yeah, you can take up the equations. The important thing is that it's a, the important thing is that the level is the weighted average of the, the previous observation and the previous level times trend. And the trend adjustment is a weighted average of LT divided by LT minus one. Basically, basically this should give us the current BT and the previous BT, OK? So it's a weighted average of these two. This model, I have to say, is not very useful. It explodes. So these are theoretical models that you could have. Not all of them are actually useful. You could have multiplicative seasonality, uh, which um, doesn't have a trend, has a seasonality, but it's uh, multiplied instead of uh, added. And these will be the equations for the level and the seasonality. The level is a weighted average of the deseasonalized observation and the previous level. Yeah, sorry, it should be S here. And so the seasonal is just a weighted average of the deleveled uh, observation and the previous seasonal. And here is a table taken from this paper by Hinman and Associates from 2002 that shows that shows all the different additive errors models that are possible. So for the trend, we have no trend, additive, multiplicative, damped. And for the seasonal, we have no seasonal, additive, or multiplicative. And so this is just the simple exponential smoothing. Um, these are the two models. This is the model with just the trend that I've shown in, in the beginning. This is just the seasonal. I've also shown it. This is the damped trend. This is the seasonal plus trend. This is the multiplicative trend, which I said is not so useful. This is the multiplicative. This is the multiplicative seasonal. And basically, all these models are even more variations that you can have that I won't go into in this video. But you can try them on your own. So this is all for this video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you understand better what the old Winters equations are. And see you in the next one.